Hey there friends, Martin here and this is an animation that I've created for the announcement video of my upcoming course at CG Boost. Here you can see these 2D effects, which I didn't really explain in the video, but I figured it might be something interesting to talk about for my own channel. So here we go, a tutorial on how I made this explosion using Grease Pencil. First though, a little introduction of my upcoming course. For the past two years, I've been building a course that lets you practice 3D filmmaking. I tried to make the topic accessible and as simple and fun to learn as possible. All of my filmmaking knowledge, everything that I learned making game cinematics and short films, I poured into 8 hours of lessons that will guide you from values to colors, from framing to composition, from cinematic tools to sequencing of shots. All that using only Blender and other free tools. Think of it as one of those fancy books on art and cinematic fundamentals, but in the form of video lessons. And by the end of the course, you'll be able to confidently dive into short film creation, knowing your fundamentals are solid. It's like a film school for 3D artists. So if it sounds interesting to you, definitely don't forget to join our waiting list, link is in the description. I like to give credit where credit is due. And so I'd love to specifically mention Olaf Storm's channel, who absolutely blew me away with his tutorials, breaking down his animated short films. And since I discovered him, I watched like all of his content. Uh, he also talks about 2D effects, so definitely have a look, though he doesn't work in Blender, which is of course the tool I am using in my workflow. Frame by frame animation in Blender is actually something I'm starting to immensely enjoy these days. I know, it's weird, because I've spent so many years avoiding this, only to find out how much fun it actually is. I still suck at it, but yeah, something of a new hobby of mine. Anyways, there are basically two approaches to this sort of animation. One, often in case of character animation, you do important blockout stages, and then fill in the so-called in-betweens. The other one is straight frame-by-frame -frame animation, where you go in sequentially, which is much better for these sorts of organic effects, like this explosion that evolves in time kinda chaotically. So starting these sorts of projects, I like to load up the 2D full canvas preset up here, and then add a empty grease pencil object, and with control tab, switch to the draw mode. I like to use the pencil tool, increase the strength to 1 and deactivate this strength pressure sensitivity. Then I just paint a first phase of this explosion, which is usually just a small cloud. Me personally, I'm using Cintiq for this sort of job, uh, but it can be done with mouse if you have the patience. What's amazing about Grease Pencil is that anytime you can go to the edit mode with tab and adjust any of your strokes, the same way as if you were manipulating geometry in Blender. So you can pick vertices and push them around. You can even extrude them if need be. And that's what I'm doing here to indicate these sorts of sharp explosion shapes. These will be visible only for the first phase of the explosion, the explosive one. Next up, let me expand this menu here, which is where the keyframes of our grease pencil are stored and we will start adding new ones. So go to frame 2 and add a keyframe here. Immediately your stroke disappears and you are free to draw a next phase of the explosion. And yeah, this is animation in a nutshell. You basically draw one frame, then create a new keyframe, the shortcut is Shift I, and draw another and then repeat until you have a frame by frame animation. But there's of course more to it. What you see here outlined with the green color is the previous frame. And this function is actually called the onion skin, which if set properly can show you one animation frame before your current stage and one after. It can sometimes be a little bit of chaos, but if you learn what's what, it will help you to fill in betweens. Anyways, with this sort of organic explosion animation, I like to preview just the previous frame that I painted and kinda extrapolate or improvise how the next phase would look. 
the general rule is to make the first phase, the explosion phase, fast, and then you can make it go much slower in the later phases, because uh, that's where the dust gets into the air and it slows down. And then the last phase is the dissipation, where the cloud breaks up and disappears. When it comes to these organic effects, there's probably no exact way to tell you how to animate this stuff. You can basically just try it out yourself, improvise and have fun. One thing you can see though, in these later phases I'm actually animating every second frame, which gives it a typical animated look. In your animations you can vary between these, so the faster phases of the animation can be every frame, but the phases where not that much happens can be every two or three or even four frames and more. With the outline animation drawn, it was time to fill it with color. So I took the automatically created material, I called it outline, and then I created a new one, I named it fill, brown, because I planned on making it brown, and uh, I deactivated the stroke here and activated the fill, giving it the brown color. And now with the fill tool, you can actually just click inside the shape and fill it on each frame. Now is a good time to talk about layers, because you don't want to have your outline on the same layer as the fill. So that's why I created another layer in this menu here and called it fill. And then I put it underneath the outline. I then selected my fill material in this menu here and using the bucket tool I started filling. Let me just quickly deactivate the onion skin here, we don't need it for this. And the layer system now does what you would expect, which means putting everything that's on the fill layer underneath the outline, so that the outline always overlaps the fill. Even for this frame by frame fill operation, you have to add new keyframes for this layer, so don't forget it. And then just keep filling on each frame, and soon you will run into a new problem. If your outline has more objects like this, you will have to do more clicks to fill it. Nevertheless, there is a better solution. You can actually activate this minus button here and click on the empty space all around your outlines, and it will fill everything that is the opposite of the selection. So, yeah, it's just one click again. An easy way to get rid of these areas where the holes in the explosion are is to create a new material, call it holdout material, and down here activate fill, deactivate the stroke, and on the fill activate the holdout option. And then just using the fill tool with the plus button activated, click on these holes. You can even do this on the same layer as the fill. And yeah, it makes those holes transparent. Another phase of the process for me was to create an extra layer above the outline, call it outline details, and using the outline material, just start drawing in a bit of extra definition to the cloud. This will then help you a lot in the shading part of the process. Next up, the burning part. So I put a new layer above the fill layer and created a new material uh, with yellow fill color. And when you use the pencil tool with the fill material activated, you can just fill in areas like this. Which I did for a first few frames of the explosion, adding this sort of fiery highlight in the middle of the cloud. Again, for this first phase of the explosion, I added keyframe on each frame and just created this little flash. So we have the outline, the fill and a little bit of explosion inside. And now the next phase is to add the highlights, which is something that usually takes the longest, but it adds to the needed plasticity to everything. So I started with adding a new fill material, which I made a brighter shade of brown that we used for the actual fill. And I started tracing the tops of the shapes indicated by the outline. That's why I said that the added details would help us in this process. Of course, at this point you have to decide where is your light coming from. So I made it neutral to come from the top. Sometimes I switched back to the outline layer and the outline material up here 
and inspired by this highlight layer, I finished up some lines here. And then it's just about, again, repeating the process, going around and wherever you feel like uh, adding this sort of highlight is needed, just draw it in. Yep, it's time consuming, but play some nice music or some podcast. And at least for me, it actually becomes quite relaxing. With that done, the final layer becomes this darkening layer at the bottom parts of the cloud. It's placed right above the fill layer, it uses slightly darker brown color, and the process is the same as with the highlights. Wherever you feel like the cloud should be darker due to the bulging shape of the various parts of it, you just paint it darker. And this is where basic training of drawing and painting really helps. Adding plasticity to your drawings is usually done by these highlighted and darkened areas. Again, I'm not a master at this, but it's fun. Finally, with this result, I actually like to turn off the outlines to leave just the shapes and the colors of the fire. And that's it for my workflow when it comes to animating this sort of 2D explosion. And on my Patreon, you can actually download these animated grease pencil sequences with some smoke, more explosions, some ricochet and other stuff. And don't forget, my new course is coming out soon, so if you don't want to miss it, join our waiting list, the link is in the description below. Until next time, stay creative my friends, Martin out.